value of humanity. I mean, living as hum humane or mm. human being, uh, in which uh, definitely love would be the very uh, core foundation of it, and also mutually respecting and mutually acknowledging each other. Mm. So I think that's the gist of <laughs> mm. Madani itself. Mm. Yeah. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi a very good afternoon to all and a very warm welcome to Professor Dr. Mazli Malik, who is the chairman of International Institute of Advanced Islamic Studies, IAIS Malaysia. Thank you very much to be on the show, Dr. Mazli. My pleasure. Uh, we are going to have a, a discussion around this organization, IAIS. And uh, as we all know that IAIS is an Islamic think tank mm -hmm. which has a special purpose, special focus to develop the minds and society as a whole. Mm -hmm. uh, in the past, of course, IAIS was perhaps very, uh, we would say that it was dedicated to a lot of scholarship, a lot of uh, material, knowledge that was disseminated to the society, uh, perhaps now we have a new focus. Mm -hmm. uh, is there such a new focus, Dr. Masli, or would you like to elaborate on this thing? Okay. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Thank you, first and foremost, to uh, our host, <laughs> Dr. Latip, and uh, uh, dear listeners. I mean, um, you know, funny thing, when I first uh, requested by the Prime Minister to come to IAS. Um, normally, when people ask me what I'm doing, I said uh, I'm. I'm now uh, was tasked to chair the International Institute of Advanced Islamic Studies, and some of them were asking, uh, "Can we do our PhD there?" Mm. <laughs> it was the the thought that. Uh, IAS was uh, or is an a place, academic institution. Uh, is an academic institution or tertiary education mm. uh, institution, mm. and I told him, no, 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 it's uh, it has nothing to do with tertiary education or postgraduate mm. education. Mm. And some of them, they still have the living memory of the previous IAS, yes. which dedicated itself mostly on uh, researchers on advanced Islamic studies mm. and uh, they thought that uh, we're doing the same. So they were asking for collabor uh, collaborations. Uh, some of them were asking for, uh, I mean, research position and whatnot. Mm, mm. And then I have to tell them, no, no, no. Uh, with the new government when the new, and with the new prime minister, IAS has been tasked with rather a new mission. Uh, which clearly, according to the Prime Minister himself, when uh, he uh, met me and uh, the CEO of IAS, Dr. Said Azman, he said that uh, IAS has been mandated to look at cultural diplo diplomacy with uh, Muslim countries and Muslim community uh, in non-Muslim countries. Mm -hmm. So with that specific mandate, uh, we were uh, asked by the Prime Minister to promote uh, the Madani, Madani agenda mm. to our to other Muslim countries and Muslim communities all over the globe, mm. and also to uh, bring forth the idea of uh, Ummah and working together as Ummah within the realm of non-political, non-governmental. Mm. You know, although we are a government <laughs> think tank, but again, he wanted us to look beyond politics. Mm. What is famously coined uh, today as the soft power or cultural diplomacy. Okay, yeah. you were talking about just now that uh, the Prime Minister, of course, mm. he has uh, embarked on uh, his vision of uh, uh, Madani society. Mm -hmm and a Madani nation. So perhaps you could elaborate on uh, how IAIS is mm -hmm. going to fulfill these aspirations of the Madani mm -hmm. uh, con uh, concept within the institution. 
I have to admit that it's a gargantuan uh, mm. task mm. that been uh, given to us, especially in bringing the Madani uh, worldview to Muslim societies across the globe, whether they are in Muslim uh, majority countries mm. or those who are living as minorities in in in, in non-Muslim countries. Um, the idea of bringing or uplifting the level of ummah rather than being a mere consumer or in most of the cases uh, Muslim countries are always known globally as the you know hotspots for complex mm. conflicts and yeah. uh, uh, and uh, let me say uh, wars and battles yeah. uh, but rather than living in that past situation where we were, the Prime Minister would like to see the Ummah thrive itself into a more civilizational community, in not only developing themselves, but also trying to be the agent of change uh, in the world itself. I mean, trying to uh, bring the world into the next level, which full of peace, love, mutual respect, happiness. And of course, it must go through uh, certain uh, over-encompassing, holistic view of development itself, which emphasizes a lot on the well-being, not only of the individuals, but mm. also the society mm. and the surrounding. I mean, people are talking about sustainability, uh, that is part of the Madani agenda, Ehsan, yeah. they, they, yeah. they mentioned it clearly. Mm. Mm. And we talk about governance. Yeah. You know, governance plays a very important role in determining the sustainability of the, any country, uh, whether it's, it is in the field of economy, in the field of politics, in the field of welfare, in the field of uh, uh, societal uh, well-being. I mean, that is part of the cornerstone of Madani itself. So what role can we play? I mean, here, I think establishing and enhancing the connections with other Muslim countries and other Muslim communities and societies uh, everywhere uh, across the globe is part of the uh, pertinent responsibility that been tasked to IIS. That's number one. So how do you, how do you, when you say you want to talk, uh, you want to get across to all the other Muslim nations and societies, mm -hmm. how do you want to, how, how would IAS go about it? Okay, it's kind of interesting. If you remember why uh, PMX <laughs> mm. so passionate about this, I mean, it was himself then. Mm. I mean, then, now, present, and continue until uh, forever, mm. I, I, I trust. It was him uh, that, most of the Muslim worlds knew in the past as, as, as an icon, as a symbol of uh, Muslim leadership, as a symbol of, uh, let me say, unity of, mm. of, Islam, uh, of, of Muslims. And so when he became the prime minister, he knit uh, an arm or a wing or a, a forum for that uh, to continue his legacy in the past and now since he is in a power, yeah. he need to uh, extrapolate that furthermore. Mm. So this is where uh, he has given IAS that task. I mean, of course, we have Wisma Putra, we have the foreign ministry, yeah. but they, they have huge other responsibilities in representing the government, in representing Malaysia to the world. Mm. But for us in IAS, uh, we only being tasked specifically in further enhancing the collaborations, the cooperations, and then the networking that already been made by PMX as a leader in the past, uh, as a continuity mm. for his uh, future endeavor as the Prime Minister of Malaysia, and also as an ideologue of Muslim uh, society all over the world. Mm. Yeah, you were talking about of course, I would admit that it is a gargantuan <laughs> task, you know, to get that whole thing done yeah, yeah. Uh, by an institute which you might have just 
you have how many employees here? <laughs> less than 30 employees. Less than 30. <laughs> so, and with that small uh, uh, human uh, capital that you have, you have to come up with such a big thing. Uh, I would like to go into another. No, you just re- is, uh, it just remind me of uh, uh, a verse in Quran when yes. Allah SWT was talking about Ghazwa uh, to Badr, I mean the battle mm, of uh, mm, Badr, mm. when he said, min fi'atin qalila, ghalabat fi'atin kabira, I mean, how many of a small group managed yes. to overcome. Uh, overcome and defeat yeah. bigger groups. Yeah. And I think, uh, yes, it's gargantuan, it's, mm. it's very gigantic, but I mean, with the trust that's been given to us, mm. uh, we try to do our best. Yeah. Yeah. So to, the one part of it is, of course, talking to the Muslim society and Muslim mm-hmm. nations. Mm-hmm. But you also, I think in your work, you have to consider, especially in Malaysia, for mm-hmm. example, uh, before we go to the other countries, uh, we have a large non-Muslim population here. Mm-hmm. Uh, and also you have to talk about the non-Muslim population in other parts of the world as well. Mm-hmm. So how are you going to message this thing, the Madani, um, uh, what do you call that, the framework, so that mm-hmm. it is better understood by also those who yeah. are not in the fold of Islam? How would you go to do it? Yes, uh, sir. It's very interesting. If you look back at the Charter of Medina, Sahifa okay. Medina, mm. uh, which I would say that was the inspiration for the, mm. Madani, the whole Madani agenda, when Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi the Prophet Muhammad addressing mm. the people of Medina, he's, he's addressing Muslims, uh, whether they are from Mecca, the Muhajirin, or the Medina. Medinans, uh, mm. Al-Ansar, mm. they are one Ummah. Mm. And on the other side, a bigger community of Medina, which consists of the Muslims, the Jewish tribes, and non-Muslim uh, Arabs, uh, Arabs, uh, Christians they are, pagans they are, mm. living together, they are as one ummah as well. Yes. So this is where I think when Sayyidina Ali alayhi salam, was mentioning about uh, the notion of, uh, uh, of uh, humanitarian connection or brotherhood uh, yes, yes. Uh, within the worldview of Muslims say that al mu'minun al ikhwatun fil iman i mean mm. the, the the believers they are brothers in uh, in 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 faith yeah. in belief mm. and uh, the non muslims are also brothers in humanity in humanity yeah. so when we are addressing the the, the whole idea of Madani. Madani itself is very, uh, I would say, inclusive. It does not make Muslim secluded or becoming so exclusive from the rest of the world, but rather putting Muslims together with others as one worldly humanity, uh, let we say, family. I mean, so the, the very idea of Medina is to Number one, first and foremost, to mutually understanding each other and mutually respecting each other. Mm. And number two, trying to spread the, the, the idea of love, happiness. And the most important thing, I think, is to inculcate the very value of humanity. I mean, living as hum, humane or mm. human being, uh, in which uh, definitely love would be the very... Uh, core foundation of it and also mutually respecting and mutually acknowledging each other mm. so I think that's the gist of <laughs> mm. Madani itself mm-hmm. yeah. and recently I think there was um, an event here mm. held in uh, IAS where you invited the ambassador of South Africa mm-hmm. to talk about uh, South Africa's role in uh, you know in uh, bringing peace to Middle East, especially Palestine. Mm. So, uh, I, 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 would I say that, uh, would I be right if I said that uh, IAIS is beginning to uh, engage with a lot of uh, sectors from mm. other countries as well to, to discuss about what you were saying just now, the human, the humanity, mm. the humanitarian problems. So, could you... I mean, to... To be honest and to be fair, IAIS before uh, its new mandate yeah. uh, was already known amongst uh, uh, 
some, let me say, elite community among the ambassadors, among the urban uh, mm. society, as an institution that always opened its doors, uh, not only to Muslims, but also to non-Muslims. We have the faith uh, community network that uh, always come together, uh, always attending uh, most of our conferences and our events here. I still remember those years and those days when I was still a lecturer before mm. I became a, a politician. Mm. Mm. Uh, I attended few events and few programs that have been organized by IAS, which was well attended by even non-Muslims, uh, mm. those from uh, interfaith societies. Mm. But now with its, with its new mandate, we have to look into maybe a different course, a different, uh, let me say, field, which is uh, a more international, uh, let me say, uh, gamut, mm. uh, in which uh, we have to admit when we talk about uh, world peace, we talk about justice, we talk about humanity, it... Uh, it is not exclusive for Muslims. Hence, we get the uh, representative from South Africa. Mm. And definitely, uh, South Africa has been an epitome of uh, the latest fight for humanity and justice and, mm. and a struggle for, let we say, freedom uh, amongst the world population yeah. when they managed to not only overcome, but managed to defeat the, the appetite regime and yes. the, 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 co the colonial mindset. And mm. what we had nowadays, uh, the aggression on Gaza, the genocide that happened in Gaza, mm. is the final chain of uh, colonialism. And that's why we, we can see how South Africa is aggressively uh, fighting for the rights of the Palestinians in ICJ, in everywhere. Mm. And they're not alone. We could see all other... Uh, community, all other Muslim countries also have jumped into the bandwagon in fighting against the injustice that has been perpetrated again against the Palestinians, not only the Gazans, but also those who live in uh, West Bank and all other uh, what we call as the occupied land of Palestine or Israel. Mm. I mean, uh, and we could see almost everywhere mm. rallies, demonstrations, protests uh, that occurs not only in Muslim countries, but especially in in, in, in non-Muslim dominated countries like in Europe, mm. in the States, United mm. States of America itself. And uh, even uh, a couple of days ago, I was uh, uh, watching uh, rallies being organized in Japan. In Japan. <laughs> yeah. We yeah. couldn't imagine in the past that yeah. the Japanese would be rallying for mm. the Palestinians. Palestinians. But again, when we talk about justice, we talk about uh, Humanity. We talk about uh, the struggles against uh, occupation and colonization. Uh, it goes beyond uh, any specific belief and faith. And this is where IRS uh, are willing to work with anybody who share the same passion, the same, uh, let me say, value in, in preserving justice, humanity, love, happiness, and anything that make us human beings. Yeah, I, of course, uh, in the context or rather in the case of Palestine, occup occupied Palestine, uh, it represents the, perhaps, of course, the colossal or the largest, ex uh, mm. the most clear example of denial of humanity oh, yeah, yeah. In, and uh, justice to a group of people. Mm. So, uh, and I've, uh, I think IAS has been in the forefront of championing the cause of Palestine for the past few months, yeah. especially after October 7. So, uh, uh, what, what do you think uh, uh, would be in the foreseeable future? Uh, what role would IAS play to uh, ensure or, or get something out of this, uh, the momentum that is there right now because world communities are, have shifted, actually. Even in America, the public opinion is not... Uh, it wasn't like what it was before. You know, uh, people were very supportive of Israel. But now, people are beginning to question and people are, are beginning to see the truth behind uh, all the propaganda that has been come. That has been come. I, I noticed that well, IAS has got a very strong media team, which is... Uh, engaging in this kind of uh, 
uh, issues. Can you elaborate on this? I think, yeah, uh, despite of uh, a lot of limitations uh, that uh, IS is uh, having at the moment, but again, you mentioned about media, you mm -hmm. mentioned about uh, connection that it, ha it has established and uh, it's establishing. Yeah. One thing about IAS, as a think tank that's owned by the Malaysian government, we can reach out to uh, the others. And I still remember, we issued a lot of statements uh, with regard to not only the Palestine issue, but the other day we talked also about uh, certain occupation that been happening in, in other parts of the world as well. Uh, with regard to the ceasefire, I think the most demanding, the most uh, important thing that we want at the moment is an immediate ceasefire mm. in Gaza. So yeah. uh, we thought that uh, certain influential uh, religious leaders could use their influence, their, let we say, popularity, yeah. or their, let we say, a networking in calling or in giving pressure to the international community, especially the oppressors, to stop the war. I mean, for example, we send letters to religious leaders of the world, including Pope mm. in, in Vatican. We send to um, uh, all the Grand Muftis. Uh, we send to Archbishop of uh, Canterbury. Mm. We send letters to other Archbishops uh, uh, belong to different churches, uh, ask, even to the Chief Rabbi. <laughs> Mm. Uh, asking them to use their influence and to use uh, their voice based on their passion towards love and humanity to give pressure on the oppressors to stop the war as soon as possible for the sake of the children, for the sake of you know, women, for the sake of people in Gaza who are dying. Mm. So not only that, we try to outreach to the embassies, we try to outreach to certain institutions abroad that within our own networking and within our reach. Yeah. Uh, another note on this mm. uh, regarding, you know, you, uh, I think one of the objectives of IAS is to uh, use religious diplomacy oh, yeah. to do its work. Mm. What do you mean by this religious diplomacy? Okay. One thing when we talk about religion, and it's very unfortunate in certain parts of the world, religion has been seen as a source of conflict rather than yeah. the source of solving the conflicts. Okay. And religion has been seen for certain community as a source of evil rather mm. than being a source that uh, fighting against evil. Okay. And so mm. this is where we're trying to look into the other dimension of religion. I mean, the real core, uh, let me say, uh, not uh, not only responsibility, but also the, the essence of the meaning of religion, regardless mm. of any belief, regardless of any religion, which is to bring peace, to bring love, to bring happiness, to bring, uh, let me say, a mutual understanding, solidarity. solidarity. So this is where, and, and many uh, academic papers have been written, many books have been written about this, on how religion can play their role, for example, in fighting against famine, against poverty, against corruption, against uh, aggression, against uh, you know, any inhuman activities that have been committed by uh, a certain group of human beings. So one thing about the power of religion, it has mm. the humanistic appeal within uh, human being. So this is where religious people should try to use whatever capacity of influence they have yeah. for the betterment of uh, human well-being, mm. regardless of uh, uh, their convictions, their, their beliefs. I mean, it's not necessarily Muslims are helping the Muslims only, or Christians are, are only concerned about the Christians and you know, Hindus, uh, Buddhists are concerning about their own fellows. I mean, I mean, it should go beyond that. I mean, a religious person should be somebody who his heart is full of love. Yeah. A religious person should be uh, somebody who his soul and spirit and mind 
is full of passion towards justice, yeah. towards uh, humanity, towards peace and mutual understanding. Yeah, But, and mm. yeah, this is what we mean by you know mm. using uh, religion in the realm of diplomacy. Yeah, but that should be the role, I think, and that is also part of, I think, the Madani uh, framework. Oh. Be- uh, how you that is the crux of Madani. The crux <laughs> of uh, Madani. How it is, uh, how religion plays an important role in developing these kind of things. Mm. But of course, you, this is something. Sometimes it's out of our control because. Mm-hmm. It depends on who who are the leaders because religious <laughs> leaders themselves sometimes uh, religion they, is they, prone they, to be abused. <laughs> uh, they abuse and there's a lot of that's where the extremism yeah. part yeah, of yeah. it comes in. Maybe you can talk a bit about oh, the yes, extre- yes. extremism. Yeah, among the let we say mandates that being given okay. to IAS mm. is to fight extremism mm. uh, within and also. Outside Islam, mm. sometimes we talk about extremism. Uh, it's very unfortunate due to the Islamophobia, uh, let we say, trend trending that's happening all around mm. the globe. People tend to associate uh, Islam with extremism. Mm. Actually, extremism uh, is not only exclusively belong to Islam. You could yes, see. Yeah. I mean, yeah, uh, you you would find extremists uh, in. Christianity in Judaism, like what we see in in in, yeah, in Palestine now. Yes, Palestine. I non-believers. We, mm. we could see how in the past uh, the atheists becoming so vicious in in, in using their power mm. to kill people, to launch yeah. pogroms and yeah. but not. I mean, extremism itself is a phenomena which does not exclusively belong to any specific religion. belief or religion or Let we say, group of yeah. people. Yeah. I mean, it's 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 a disease by itself. It's mm. it's a virus by itself that should be uh, eliminated. That should be mm. counterattacked. Yeah. I mean, this is where IAS has been given the mandate to fight against the extremism and try to bring the voice of moderation. Number number mm. one and number two, we are also being tasked to uh, help uh, other, uh, yeah, the Muslims and non-Muslim alike. To counter this, uh, that we say, ferocious uh, uh, tendency of Islamophobia, mm. which has been uh, used by the media for their own gains and by certain group of uh, people for their own interests, it happened yeah. uh, worldwide. So it needs a concentrated, collaborative effort. Uh, not only among Muslims, but also among uh, with the non-Muslims community who are being fair and being just to others, to work to give a counter narrative, uh, alas, to eliminate the Islamophobia mm. from the world. Mm. So these two tasks come along with our religious diplomacy and cultural yeah. diplomacy. So, but it is a very huge task, of course, because if you talk about Islamophobia by itself. I think uh, this phenomena, uh, you can see it in yeah. Europe right now. Yeah. It is. It, no, it is involves really media. It involves the international yeah. system. It involves everything, the power. Yeah. And but uh, nothing is impossible. And you know, every journey starts with the first yeah. step. <laughs> yes, with the first step. Yeah. So, uh, what other, what other uh, programs do you have in mind? Uh, at IAIS, which you think you would do in the future to raise the <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, uh, whatever you want to say about IAIS so that it is better known among not mm-hmm. just Malaysians but on, a, on, a, on an international uh, level. Yeah. At the moment, I think we are trying all our best to make ourselves visible, mm-hmm. first and foremost, yeah. uh, amongst Malaysians mm-hmm. because uh, not many Malaysians have heard about IAIS. Yeah. So, and It's rather difficult to pronounce it I A I S, and I met yeah. <laughs> a lot yeah. of people who mistakenly pronounce it as it. No, no, no worry. I mean, you can call us whatever you like, but the most important thing you you should share our vision and our passion. Yeah. I mean, yeah, our future programs. We have a long list of uh, 
activities and programs that we want to organize in in the future mm. whether it's uh, in Malaysia or abroad mm. uh, currently we are still being occupied with uh, connecting ourselves with uh, organizations within Malaysia and outside Malaysia uh, we are trying to reach out to the embassies and mm. to any similar think tanks abroad uh, whether in muslim countries or a majority non muslim countries as well mm. so we have established our networkings we have established our let we say a circle of uh, influence mm. uh, to work on certain specific uh, programs and issues mm. um in the future would you would see that uh, we will be actively participating in you know prop- not only propaganda but also uh spreading awareness and uh, maybe lobbying <laughs> yeah. lobbying uh, for the best interest of the ummah mm. for the best interest of our beloved country malaysia sure. and for the best interest of humanity as a whole mm. so we're trying to do our best but again just like i reiterated earlier that we are trying to make ourselves visible first mm. on a final note i just want to ask you <laughs> about what would you consider as uh, the most successful thing that you have done or rather iis has done it in in recent in recent times so over the past few months that has really given an impact to society anything iis oh i mean it would rather be uh let me say unfair if mm. i'm trying to uh, evaluate my own self but i think uh, let the public talk about our achievement that would be much mm. appreciated and would be more let we say just <laughs> yeah. but for us in ias i mean at the moment we feel proud that uh, at least every week we have programs and activities oh, yeah. <laughs> mm. in our own uh, territory in mm. in our own building and we have managed to reach out to uh, as wide as possible audience that uh, maybe uh, in the past uh, they were not our connections and mm. uh, we have made our voice heard even at the international agenda with our statements with our letters that mm. we send to different leaders and different oh, countries okay. and i mean uh, we also feel very honored to be part of the struggle uh, to end uh, the war in gaza with other organizations and other uh, let we say institutions mm-hmm. yeah okay we have come i think to the end of the <laughs> uh, interview and uh, first i would like to thank dr mazli for his very insightful and visionary uh, <laughs> you know, uh, what he has in mind for iis and that uh, with that i would like to thank uh, dr mazli for his time and uh, inshallah we will meet again in other podcasts of this nature thank you very much assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh assalamu